Let me tell you about Jane. Jane knows what is important and meaningful to her in life. And predominantly for her, it's her children. She has even come up with some goals for herself around spending more time with her children after work. But there is something stopping her and getting in the way. It's her own mind. We've discussed before that our minds bring a lot of threats to our attention. It likes to compare ourselves to others. It likes to judge. It likes to criticise. It likes to present us with worst case scenarios so we can try and problem solve and prepare ourselves. And sometimes when these thoughts and feelings show up for us, they can impact our behaviour. So they can impact the things that we actually do. They can actually end up taking us away from the things that we find value and meaning in. And we can end up avoiding things, avoiding going to parties, avoiding going to job interviews, avoiding finding ways to sort out our finances, avoiding going to places that remind us of things that may have happened to us, but we still deep down want to go to. And when we are controlled by our thoughts and feelings in this way, they start to become problematic for us. And something else can happen. And this is what happens in Jane's case when she wants to play with her kids, is that she gets so lost, so caught up in her thoughts, so tangled up in them, that it takes her away from the present moment. So instead of sitting there and playing with the Paw Patrol Mighty Pups Tower with her six-year-old, she instead sitting next to the Mighty Pups Tower, staring into space and completely lost in a thought or in an image or a memory about work or an argument she's had with her partner or she's thinking about something coming up in the future. But whatever it is, it isn't, how is Chase going to save Chicken Letter? Right, time for a quick geek out moment here. And I know some of you like these and some of you don't. But this bit isn't necessary to understand any of this. It's just a bit um, more insight into acceptance and commitment therapy. So when our thoughts control our behaviour, we call this cognitive fusion. So cognitive in this sense, meaning everything that's going on inside your head. So thoughts, memories, images, uh, urges, even emotions, because when you experience an emotion, it usually brings with it things like memories, images and thoughts. And the word fusion means that we are strongly connected to it, we are bound to it, we are fused in it in a way that is difficult to release. And on the flip side of this, the opposite, we have a cognitive defusion, which is the ability to get some separation from it, get some space from it, get some space in there. So cognitive diffusion is the technical and clinical term for what this video is all about. And cognitive diffusion is one of six parts of the acceptance and commitment therapy model. We haven't touched upon the other parts yet in this series. They are coming up after this one. But what you will find is that these six all work together. They are like a web that we can move around. It doesn't have to be done in a certain order. So all of this will make sense later on. So don't just think that this is all of acceptance and commitment therapy in this one video. This is just one small part of it. Well, a sixth. So similar to Jane, we all have thoughts, memories, feelings and images that are difficult when they show up for us. And the problem isn't so much the actual thoughts and feelings. It isn't so much the content. And by content, I mean specifically what the words are or what the image is. It's how we respond to that when it shows up that can be problematic. So just think, when they show up for you, what happens next? What do you do differently? What do you maybe start doing? What do you stop doing? What do you avoid doing? How are you different around other people? How are you different around children if you have children? How are you different around your parents if you have parents? How are you different around friends and colleagues? What do these thoughts and feelings take you away from in the present moment? 
Do you catch yourself trying to enjoy something, trying to get into something, but you can't because you are so tangled up with a thought or an image or a memory? And for Jane, when these thoughts and feelings show up, what happens next is she gets caught up in them. She focuses on them so much that they drag her into them. She gets completely lost in them. And that takes her away from the present moment and from spending time with her kids. So it's a move away from what she really wants in life. She is almost at the mercy of these, these thoughts and feelings. One way to look at this is to imagine out there in the world in front of you is everything that matters to you, everything that is important, everything that is meaningful, all the things you enjoy doing, all the people you love and like spending time with, all the things you like to do and how you like to spend your time. But also out there in front of you are all the everyday problems and challenges that you may be facing, like finances. Uh, maybe you've got physical health problems. Maybe some difficulty in your relationship with someone. Maybe some difficulty at work. And what's more, there are all the things you kind of have to do in life, like cleaning the house, cleaning the dishes, maybe going to work, going shopping, paying bills, doing your day-to-day -day life admin that just seems to increase every year and takes up more and more of your time. Let's take our hands and these represent our thoughts and our feelings. And when we do this, we try to notice three things. So let's just cover our face. And if I do that, you're not going to be able to hear me on the microphone, I don't think. So I'll just put my hands in front of me, but we'll cover our faces. Firstly, how difficult is it to engage or focus on anything out in the world right now? If you were trying to read a good book or watch a film with a partner, how easy would that be? How much would you be able to experience that? And secondly, how hard is it to give anything your attention? If you needed to sort out some bills or prepare some work for your job, how hard would this be to give it your full attention like this? And thirdly, how difficult is it to take action? Could you drive your car? Could you do the food shopping? Could you play with your child if your thoughts and feelings are this close to the forefront of your mind and taking up this much of your focus? Now let's see what happens when we lower our hands to our lap. Notice how much easier it is to focus on what's in front of you and connect with it. If your partner or family member or child or friend were in front of you right now, how much easier would it be to engage with them? If you needed to put your attention onto paying some bills, how much easier is it this way? If you needed to drive the car or attend to a child or hug an elderly relative or make lunch, how easier is it to take action? And notice these hands are still here. They haven't gone anywhere. We've not cut them off. And sometimes thoughts and feelings do have some helpful information about what's going on for us in the moment. So we, we can use our thoughts and feelings if they are helpful. They're still here. They're not going anywhere. They might be directing your awareness to something that needs to be done, a task to be completed, or something that needs attending to. And when they have done that, we can let them sit here on our lap. It is possible. This is what cognitive diffusion is, getting that space and distance. So to summarise, we know we are going to have difficult thoughts and feelings. That is just part of being human. All human minds do this. And if you haven't already, watch the previous video called Happiness, It's a Trap that explains more why. And we cannot escape this. In fact, it's the trying to escape it that often leads us to the most difficulty. And we know that when this stuff shows up, we can get all caught up in it. We can get all tangled in it and it can take up all of our focus. And when that happens, we know that it influences our behaviour. We can end up avoiding things that we actually really want to do. And it can take you away from things in life that you want. It doesn't move you in the direction you want your life to go. Or it can take us away from something important and meaningful in the present moment. It can make it hard to focus or engage in what you are currently doing. 
and finding some way to diffuse or to get some distance from those thoughts and feelings might mean they don't dominate your behavior as much and you can spend a bit more time in the present moment doing something meaningful, important, or that you have to do. So that gives a an overview of this one part of ACT. So what should you do next? My recommendation is you check out the playlist on my channel, which should be called Let It Go, and it might say Cognitive Diffusion in brackets, and start having a play with some of the exercises that are in there and see if you can get a little bit of distance from your thoughts. See if you can take a bit of the sting out of them. Remember, they're not going to go away. They're not going to disappear. We're not pushing them away. We're trying to engineer a little bit of space so they don't dominate our behavior. I hope that was useful. I appreciate this may seem like a big ask right now, but as we progress through these videos, all of this will start connecting with each other and hopefully should make some more sense. Thanks for watching everyone. Take care. Goodbye.